and this is, you know, what I say, in the days when you're earning $25 a day, that seemed like the artistic uh, situation. Yeah. Well, here we are, we're trying yeah, to work at this. Like this sometimes takes a little bit longer, because I know now the face is going to be looking out that way, and it's a little quicker. So once the chin is established, and this part here, uh, you work on it to make it look comfortable. Uh, no problem. It's enough stick to go around, you know. Mm -hmm. Careful, I say that. <laughs> hey man, I got a big. So stick now we know that the face is in there. Well, the very first thing you put in, the very first thing is that from this side, you work on a very distinct silhouette. You ignore everything else, and it means this point here goes on first because it's midway. What is going on? Two days in the bush, eh, fellas? No way. We're already looking at each other like. And you learn how deep to make it. If you watch people, you'll see that certain people have no nick in here. Uh, especially, they must be Greeks. <laughs> Some <laughs> peoples that there, there no nick in here whatsoever. If you watch uh, Mentalist, that one, that one guy that's always having an affair with the with the gorgeous chick, Rigsby. Rigby, his nick <laughs> is exceptionally deep. Man, is he got, is he deep I love in that here? Joke. And and when you see with some people they have very very little, and some people have a very pronounced nick. So you got that. That's a feature. Okay, so now I've created that that nick. That means that the eye. So here this point is, and there's the eye there. If you're going a frontal one, you look at the eye. The eye has a space of an eye between the two eyes. The length of the nose is going to look all right if it's the length of an eye. The pupils of the eyes, they extend the corners of the mouth, the corner of the mouth. Well, some people have a bigger mouth, some people have a smaller mouth, but it'll look right if you're following just that rule of the eye. The length from the lower lip is an eye, and the length, uh, kind of a long face, you usually reduce that uh, from the nose down. The length of the nose being an eye, and so that very quickly starts you on the road of carving faces that look right. Well, now that I know that that is there, we now find that with the boat of, of wood that I got to remove here, a hatchet would be faster. But I, I, I won't bother. It's a hatchet. And then I got a seal. Uh, some woods are, are very uh, aspen. It's been cured properly. Will sustain very precise details. Birch. But bobler bark is fuzzy. It, it's your details that get too fine and you start losing it from there. So I extend this. So I now know where the eyes go. So I know that between this notch and the top of my head is the hairline, generally, approximately. So I start nibbling away with the idea to create a very distinct silhouette here. So that's what my thinking all goes. I ignore everything else. Have one computer set up one way and one set up the other. So there's the hairline. There's the brow. There's the nose. Bridge of the nose. The bottom of the nose. The upper lip. The lips. And then the chin. So you keep working on this until you're satisfied. And of course, you carve, and then you name your carving after it's finished. Don't say I'm going to carve an Indian head. <laughs> carve a face and then try to carve an Indian head, and at the end, oh yeah, it's an Indian head. So sometimes it turns out to be an African, and <laughs> sometimes it turns out to be something else. But you, So you're working, I see as I look here, uh, I'm working on creating that silhouette. And I don't have to worry about anything else. So I just did the bottom of the nose a little bit more. And generally when you look, the, uh, the, the, if you look at people, you find uh, Drew Barrymore. Boy, her chin sticks out further. She probably her chin sticks further than her nose. But frontal view, she's exceptionally gorgeous. But you see a side view, you see she's got quite a long, <laughs> jutting out chin. If you know what I mean. So, so generally, you don't have to worry about a lot of things because, like I say, when you're finished with it, there's likely a human that does look like you're carving. And, and so on here in this instance, my cutting in the chin part here needs to be improved. And you can, uh, the one problem is carving ears. So you try to have hair that takes away the necessity, because if the ear is covered with braids in the hair, it's a lot simpler. 
I mean, you can spend a long time uh, carving something, or you can choose a format which you knock out very quickly. And, uh, Some people have long uh, 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 eyebrows, their brows are protruding and so on. But you're starting to see that I'm developing a profile. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wonder if that one's going to work. And the nicer the profile, the closer the profile resembles so you, the more you will look like this carving. It's actually remarkably easy to carve a face on account that you just have to look at somebody and say, oh. What do I do here? Just look at someone and you know so it the into you and The other thing you tend to look at is lines. Raymond Burr. Oh man, can you carve a Raymond Burr's face? Easily because of the massive lines. You had three lines. As soon as you carve three lines on a face, people have to say, that's Raymond Burr. He's like, he's in there, he's chipping away. He's like, man, this is ridiculous. What do we do with the other way? He was an actor, man. I made it. I think he's from the same And I did a... He was, uh, he was a wheelchair-ridden, uh, well, he was an actor who uh, took the part of a, of a private eye, an Iron investigator, uh, and, and he had to do all his work from a wheelchair, for example. So he, you know, like the mentalist, well, he was a series on TV. You really could date yourself if you could name the name of the show. Ironside. Ironside. Yeah. <laughs> Does that date me? <laughs> okay. So now I'm going to say I'm going to go on because I've got to go home. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Did you see that? I'm pretty sure that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Now. Yeah. You know. Yeah. 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 That the hairline gives you a clue of where the hair should go. So you can continue there. And since this is going to be a native guy with, with uh, feathers, you know that the braids are likely going to go from here to there. So you isolate that out in order not to impinge outside that boundary. And now you know the eye has to be here somewhere. There's the eye socket. And you know the nose doesn't go all the way across, so you draw a line from the corner of the eye down to the corner of the mouth. Then you take your hatchet and you slice off a large amount. <laughs> to the fact oh. that the cheek. <clears throat> He's got an awfully broad face, so I gotta narrow that down with his... Oops, <laughs> that was a slip. I'm sure I'm sure it would go to Those guys have written whole books on carving Indian heads. There was a guy in the States we met at Rabbit Stick that actually seemed to make a living of it. So if I was in good form and I had the right knife and if the piece was a little bit smaller, I probably could. What I would do with kids is there would be bark and it would be probably about half the thickness and whatever. And there's a big pile of bark laying there and the kids are told to pick out a piece of bark. Start cutting off all the stuff that is crumbly, and a kid is timing you. And you might say you've got to, you got to, you got to give me 45 seconds. And I, kid hands me a stick, and I go, then I hand it back, and the kid's got to finish. But I almost in that 45 seconds, I've just completed the face. And the kid only has to do this, and they figured they did it all. So, so anyway, they, but the issue of, uh, and of course all the stances that you take in making the carvings. Yeah, it makes you do it so much that you start to uh, unconsciously almost put yourself into a safe uh, way of holding and so on. Now once the line from the corner of the nose, there are many, many variations in regard to lines and things. And, and uh, you... And the corner of the mouth runs. There's that funny thing, there's a special name for it, of uh, the upper lip there. Left. And uh, your objective might be make, make big sensuous lips, or very austere. Lips. 
this is kind of fairly fair bark, high quality bark, so it's actually a bit of a challenge to be carving on account. Don't okay. forget about that's the dry gone. That's the same bark that we used for that yeah. YouTube video. Don't forget about dry yeah, that's, 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 this is probably from the Sekunka. Yeah, yeah. 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 There's a YouTube yeah, I, video with Morris doing this when he sells a beard and a whole bit. Oh, okay. I got invented that. Oh, then it looked like it was a while ago. I don't need to take notes then. <laughs> There's a book that we sell on ebooks called Bush Arts that Morris wrote. Oh, well, it goes in it's just fairly new you guys have been selling that, isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's been fairly recently you guys have been selling that, right? Yeah. On ebooks, yeah, but uh, Lone Pine published it. And they made, they published, they made 5,000 copies, and that was it. Yeah. So if you have a copy of that, the Bush game. Arts. <laughs> Some people want a hundred dollars for it on the internet mm. or something. You can, we have found some in uh, bookstores and that. Yeah. And same with some of the old Northern Bushcraft books. Yeah. You find one small in these bookstores and you pick up the, because now, the publisher and all their wisdom, they put all their pictures in black and white. <laughs> Cheap. Cheap. I, I have one of the original ones. <laughs> but I don't, I, don't, I don't think I have any of them with Morris's signature in them. <laughs> How hard is that to get? I got his book over, over my bag over there. Yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah, me too. You got books to autograph? Yeah. Yes, sir. Saturday. You got 20 bucks? <laughs> yeah, you can add 20 bucks to the price of the book and sell it. You get my autograph and have me write the right thing and you can sell it for $100. Well, the only right thing to be would be whatever it is you want to say with my name on it. You can give a shit about anybody else. <laughs> Andy, Andy, why don't you start publishing again the books, or is it just too much of a pain to publish? You don't can't get the numbers. To get them in written form. Yeah, because ebooks. I, I still like them. Well, you know, paper. You know. Well, we're not big enough. Yeah. And Morris refuses to go with a publisher. Right. So it's and getting them in printed form is you know. $40,000. Don't think I was trying right. to teach you how to play pool. And then you yeah. got to distribute them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to distribute them, you, you, you got to go with a major yeah, company yeah, to distribute them. <laughs> and all of a sudden, it's not even cost you yeah. money. Oh, yeah. yeah. You, you know, you got to go with Rainforest. And there was just a major publisher uh, a couple years ago, a wholesaler here in Canada who went under because of the evil. You to take that back to the fire. Oh yeah. Good job. You get, uh, you get Gibbs, Gibbs Smith. Everything's on ebooks now. They're a, they're a big publisher there in, in the states. Mm -hmm. You know you can buy everything on ebook. Right. So yeah. that makes it a lot easier. Yeah, huh? I got even a few blood stains in my book, so it's already got character. If I got oh. your, yeah. If I got your. Uh, Signature. No, back then would be complete. We could take it out more to the forest. Oh, look at that. Oh, 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 I know, I never <laughs> did. You know, I mean, this here is. Yeah, uh, yeah you want to be able to create the merchant. Anyway, I'm quitting at this. Well, maybe I should put a few feathers up there. As you can see, oh, yeah, if I was in good form, that should take 10 minutes. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. Right. Yeah. Like, you know, modesty is just on one of those things we just not have a lot of, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I was in good form. <laughs> yeah, actually, How long does it take when you get make this form? profile, <laughs> you could hang it on the wall. Like that. But if you carve this off at an angle and you make it hang like that, then it gives a much more of a three-dimensional appearance to hang it on the wall and tilt it outward. And of course, here you can get very elaborate uh, to the type of headdress you might choose to put on. <laughs> my rule I found in the folk uh, festivals and everything when they would hire me, there was a time when I was kind of popular. <clears throat> I would carve. Uh, at that time, if I stopped at seven dollars, I had orders that would keep me busy for a month or so after the trade after the folk festival was over because I could take. But while I was carving, many people would show up, and I would carve to the extent where. Like, you know, 10 minutes, Ooh. and I'd stop. And, and it, the standard price was to stop at $7. Yeah.
Everybody bought Kobe. bought them. Kobe. And especially when they had a chance to watch the carve, they were really happy to acquire it. Yeah. Why well. can't you carve someone's face and you could, because yeah, I, I was beginning to feel that I was getting into that, that <laughs> amount of, uh, 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 you know, sometimes you carve a lot and then you start to feel that you are being able to look at a person and carve. But no, the book of bush arts goes through that there, plus a bunch more. Yeah. 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 Yeah.